Hello, in this video I will talk about how you write functions in Python and how you can chunk your code into semantically separated parts that you can reuse later. As I've noticed that these videos already took quite, uh, quite a while, I will skip some parts of this lecture in this video, but if you have, um, if you have time and you want to know a little bit more, then you can go to GitHub and go through the rest of the lecture um, that I skipped here. Um, and uh, yeah, try to understand um, yourself how everything works. Um, and in this video, I'll just go uh, through the essentials of how writing functions in Python works. All right, so a very basic function in Python starts with the def keyword, and def stands for define, and is always used uh, to define functions. Then after that, we have the name of the function, and uh, yeah, a few uh, as we have already talked about, there is this pep8 convention um, which talks about how you should name your functions and um, yeah, make sure to follow that so that everyone can understand what different functions are supposed to do. And it's also always nice to have um, good names for your functions that already uh, explain what they do, but not too long function names uh, such that code doesn't get lines of code don't get too long and um, which makes them less readable as well. Um, now coming back to this function definition, after the name of the function we add parentheses and we always need these parentheses even if we don't have any uh, parameters. But in these uh, parentheses if we want to define parameters we can do that by just stating the names. So we don't have to specify any types but we can just write um, the names of the parameters that we want defined in this function. And at the end, we again need a colon to, um, to show, to signal Python that um, we now start a new block. And this new function block all, uh, also needs to be indented, just as with loops and if statements, for example. And um, yeah, now in this indented part, we can do whatever we want to do in this function. And in this case, in this multiply function, we would just want to um, multiply these two parameters, x and y, and return the um, result of that. And the return keyword um, just works as a way to um, return some value from a function uh, which you will get at the position where you call a function. Then calling this function or running the function works um, after defining it by just writing the name and then parentheses and in the parentheses you just add um, yeah, which values you want to pass as parameters. So if we execute this definition and then this call of the function we get the result 12 and um, Jupyter Notebook will automatically print whatever was returned um, down here because, um, as I said before, it will just evaluate the last line and print um, the result if it's not none. Now we can also check the type of our function and Python will tell us it's a function um, that we just uh, declared. This is also very obvious, I guess. And um, yeah, one thing to note is that every function in Python does return something and uh, you don't have to write a return statement, but if you leave it out, it will automatically return none. And none, as I said before, is this um, missing value word, uh, keyword, uh, which tells Python that um, this doesn't have a value. So treat this as uh, a null, for example, in C++ or Java, and it's just a missing value of some kind. So if we look at this um, function, which just prints the text that we passed as a parameter uh, with a couple of spaces before. Um, and then we call this function with hello, a string hello. Um, we get this return value here. So we can assign the result of this function call to a variable. We call this variable a return value. And then we print this. And this will print as none um, because the, re uh, the return of a function that does not return anything is none. Um, yeah, and if you want to include returns and maybe even more than one, this is very easily possible in Python because you can just write uh, multiple returns and uh, return values separated by commas in Python and uh, Python will automatically pack these into a tuple and return the tuple of these uh, elements. And uh, this function plus minus one will take a number and return the tuple um, with uh, two elements the first element will have 
the number minus one, the second element will have the number plus one. So here we call this function plus minus one with 10, and then we can say the variables a and b uh, should be assigned whatever this function returns. And this, uh, since this function returns a tuple of two values, Python automatically figures out that the first uh, value in the return should be mapped to a and the second one to b. So if we print this, we get 9 for 10 minus 1, so the first part here, and 11 for 10 plus 1, so the second um, return argument here. And we can check the return type um, of this function by um, calling the type function and just putting in this function call, and it actually tells us, yes, this is a tuple. All right, I I'll skip the doc strings in this video. Um, you can have a look uh, at that on your own. But doc strings are just a way to um, include some documentation in your, into your functions with this um, comment at the top. Now, coming to um, a little more about arguments. Arguments um, are also called parameters. And um, yeah, as we've seen before, these parameters are used to pass some values to functions. And um, I think yeah, I actually have to execute this uh, this cell right here to be able that, uh, to execute this one. Um, yeah, um, so this returns an error because this function up here, say hello, will uh, request two parameters. But down here, we just passed one, we just passed afternoon. And the problem is now that Python doesn't know what the value of people should be. And um, there's a way to handle these cases if you want to call a function with just, for example, one parameter, um, but the function would actually need two to do something, then you can um, define default values for certain um, parameters by, uh, by just saying parameter equals some value in the definition. So here we redefine this function and um, it uh, accepts two parameters, time and people, and people will have a default value of friends, string friends. So we don't have to call this um, function with two parameters, but we can. We can also do it with just one. Um, and here the example, um, we just call it with one. And uh, if we just call it with one, this people, so in the string we created here, people will just be friends. But now we call it with two arguments. And um, yeah, this friends got replaced by students. Okay, I will also skip this call by value or call by reference. Um, because this gets a little deeper into um, the internals of Python. But if you're interested in um, in what way the parameters in Python um, work and um, how you have to handle different cases of passing different things, um, take a look at this part. Um, yeah, I will also skip this and um, the args and quarks as well. Um, this is very useful um, if you want to to, um, um, yeah, if you want to create classes and um, derive classes from them, then it's very um, handy to have these quarks and args arguments, but um, this will not be too important. Uh, so if you want, you can have a look at this, but um, yeah, it's not too bad if you don't have uh, time to look at it. The last thing I want to um, cover is the zip function, and uh, zip is a very nice way to iterate over two uh, collections at once. And here we have two collections, um, we call them names and ages, and um, they both have three uh, elements. And now we want to iterate over both of them combined. So we would like to um, get the first element of both and then the second element of both and so on. And Python has a very easy way to do this, uh, namely the zip function. And it works similarly as the enumerate function we've seen before. Just um, the difference is that you don't pass one collection but two, and they have to have the same uh, length. And then Python will group them together basically, and you will again get these two um, variables defined in this for loop. And in this example, we can just print them. So here um, we get Peter 20, Paul 30, and Mary 40. Yeah. Um, and the uh, zip takes um, yeah, these two um, iterables as parameters and will return a generator 
which um, just packs these together, which is um, yeah very very handy. Now zip can also be used. Um, this relates to the arcs. Uh, so this part up here with the star arcs, um, it can also be used to um, yeah, conveniently pack lists of tuples as um, function arguments. Um, but I will also not cover that here. Um, you can have a look at that if you um, had looked at the arcs and quarks section before.